Other interesting cultural news, you have Mr. Beast suing Beast Burger, or rather, more accurately, the white labeler behind it, and he wants to shut them down. Now, this is a white label company. When it comes to business and what a white label is, it's in a sense where the brand isn't really making the product. So they're basically licensing Mr. Beast's brand and a separate company is making it. Mr. Beast doesn't have a Beast Burger company that he himself makes. It's very much a traditional white label. So you have a company, or in this case, a company with many, many restaurants, they're making the product, they slap on the other label, the brand label of Mr. Beast, and it's known as white labeling. And some people, again, it's, it's not pejorative things. Um, some people might think it's not authentic. Uh, there are a lot of businesses that do it. Um, actually, BlackBerry back in the day, that's well, how they got started was these OEM contracts or original equipment manufacturer contracts. But I digress, getting back to this situation, it turns out that Mr. Beast, again, most viral YouTuber in history, billions of views, billions, I got so many billions, everyone has to see me, I give away the wealth, the wealth everywhere, the burgers, the, the chocolate. It's one of those things where there's a little silver lining to everything in life and a little comical relief. And some, some might argue every politician contributes to something, even if it's just mildly, mild entertainment, but I digress. Now, this comes as people are actually coming to see the food from these Beast Burgers as, quote, inedible, quote, revolting. And yeah, Jimmy, Don Jimmy uh, Donaldson, who's the real name of Mr. Beast, he's advertising the hell out of this. And it makes sense. It's his brand. He wants to, you know, get the word out there. But it looks like things aren't, things are going pretty sour, or in this case, pretty uh, raw, as raw as the beef they presumably serve. Now, he filed a lawsuit in New York, New York Court District last Monday, accusing the company known as Virtual Dining Concepts. Now, that's the company that's actually making the products and executing this initiative and putting his label on top of it. Now, he's suing them on the grounds that they're damaging his reputation by selling undercooked hamburgers and cold fries. And he has his name on it. So, of course, in terms of his brand being tarnished, again, I'm not a judge. I have better hair than them. Although, maybe I, will, I did have that George Washington hair. I should have brought it back for this. I, let me know if you want to see more costumes, but I digress. But it's one of those issues where his brand is certainly being tarnished because the perception, a lot of people don't know that the company Virtual Dining Concepts is the one behind this. They thought Jimmy and his team was doing it. A, down, so a, a downside of a white label situation, sometimes an upside if it, they do a good job. But it looks like in terms of the suit, it says that Virtual Dining Concepts has repeatedly damaged his reputation by not ensuring all burger quality and times serving up raw food. And Interestingly enough, it also claims that Donaldson has yet to receive a dime from the venture, which is probably why he's suing as well. Again, this is someone who's worth more copious amounts of money than I could possibly fathom. These burgers are also, you know, geographically priced in some areas there's as much as much as ten dollars while still being rated a two out of five. Which again, I know mass scores in the United States are all time low, but let's just say two out of five is not such a good rating. Now, interestingly enough, as he's trying to file this lawsuit. They get back into the numbers, and it looks like a great example of people who, again, I'm not talking about Jimmy, I'm talking about, it seems like when I talk to people about business, there's a big disconnect between what is revenue and, and what is the actual profit of a company. Now, going down into the depths of this, you're looking at all these documents, and I'm trying to come up, bringing up the actual statistics. Uh, and these burgers, are, these pictures are quite horrific. You, the um, past most disgusting things I've ever seen. Now, in terms of the numbers, it looks like last July, so that was two years into the venture, Donaldson bragged that they had made an astonishing amount of money. In fact, more than $100 million in revenue. AKA, that's $100 million coming into their business before they take into account all of the costs associated with the business. Now, it looks like the firm started with 300 locations in the US, but they expanded to 1,000 across North America. And in January, the cash earnings and the operations stood at $150 million. Now, the downside is when they account for the 30% fee paid to the actual locations who make them, as well as the cost of the ingredients, the shipping, the packaging, the storage, and their expenses, the net profit is only around $30 million. Now, again, that's still a great amount of money, but relative to $150 million, not as profitable as one might think. And interestingly enough, that amount of money is supposed to be split between Jimmy, AKA Mr. Beast, and Virtual Dying Concepts, but it hasn't been split yet. So I suspect that part of the reason he's suing is to get his actual money that he's actually entitled to, because he's lending them his brand, his most, 
his most valuable thing about him, similar to the Dallas Cowboys, they haven't won a game since the floppy disk was popular, I believe. Which again, if you're, uh, I might be aging myself. When you look at just saving a document in Microsoft Word, if you see the top, this little icon up there, that's a floppy disk. So it's not just a save icon, it was actual media that you slip into the computer and save on it. But I digress, the Dallas Cowboys are four, four plus billion dollar valuation because they license their brand. So if you pay them well, a couple hundred thousand dollars, you can be the official dentist of the Cowboys or what have you. And you can slap the logo on your building and your sales will increase because of that perceived brand association. Licensing is a huge industry in and of itself. And again, it's one of the most important things about it. In this case, he's lending out what is the most viable YouTube channel in history to this restaurant company. And they're certainly not doing their due diligence and actually executing properly. So again, looking at the facts, just again, I'm no legal scholar, but with all the information I have at hand at the moment, it certainly seems like he has a case and I don't know what the pushback is going to be from this company or how they're going to overcome it in terms of the court situation. But as I say, time shall tell. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, we're trying to get to 3000 subscribers by the end of August. So I greatly appreciate you taking the time to click that button. Also, if you take the time to like and comment, that helps us grow and develop as well. Really appreciate the feedback that I'm getting. Also, don't forget to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.